Welcome to today's workout, and today we're working through another beginner workout. So it's perfect for those of you that might be returning to fitness or just wanting to start off your fitness journey. Um, today you'll want to grab a water bottle. As always, stay hydrated. It doesn't matter what level workout you're doing, um, and you might want to grab a, uh, a, a mat here as well. So. This is optional. This is good for if you if you have a hard floor or if you don't have carpet or you just want to have a little bit of something something more squishy to rest your forearms on because today we will have a few planks in our workout. So We've got the timer up here. You can follow along with the timer. You can have my voice on. I'll be explaining the cues while we while we work through this one. Um, so in 20 seconds, we're going to start off with uh, the with the the humble squat. So here we go. Start your watches. Start your cardio mode. Start your heart rate. And 20 seconds time. Find yourself a space here. Kicking off with squats. Now a squat is is one of the fundamental human movements. Um, Barring any mobility issues or injuries that you may have, most people should be able to do some squats. And if you'd like to learn how, follow through with these cues. We're gonna start off with about feet shoulder width apart, the toes pointing out five to 10 degrees, and you're gonna, you're gonna pretend like you're sitting on an invisible chair. So watch my form here. I wanna keep my heels nice and flat on the floor, sitting on this chair, and then using the glutes and the quads to stand ourselves up. So repeat this. So doing one or two squats is perfect, is fine, but where we actually get the benefits in doing, in doing a nice foundational movement is by repetition. If we can repeat good form over and over again, we will teach ourselves a little bit how to, how to move, um, especially when we start lifting weights or we start advancing through further, further difficulties. Um, having a really, really strong basis is quite important. So we wanna practice that movement as much as we can. So here's, gonna grab your mat now. Roll it out, because we've got a plank to do. Now again, planking is, is another sort of baseline foundational hold. Um, and I actually prefer this than doing sit-ups. A lot of people will try and work their abs by doing sit-ups, but I feel like the plank is a little bit better for activation of the core. So down on the floor, forearms on the floor, grabbing your fists, push those legs out straight, squeeze the butt and squeeze your quads. So that's, the, that's probably the, the first thing I'll, I'll ask people to do. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the quads. Because what that does, that locks your body into a straight plank position here. We want a straight line between the shoulders, the hips, and the ankles. And I'd like it so that you can still breathe into your belly. So, nice straight line. Hopefully you felt that activate around here. Um, because you're gonna try and stop your body from dipping in the middle. You're gonna activate this core, bring it up, and hold into a straight line. Cool, all right, so another leg movement. This is the lunge. It's the, uh, <coughs> it's the cousin of the squat. Um, and this one is, is interesting because most people will spend a bit of time walking in their day-to-day -day lives. But the lunge takes it to a whole other level, doesn't it? So we're gonna do forward lunges. Right foot, forward, lunge, bring yourself back up. Left foot, lunge, and up. Now what's important with this one, not just your legs. I know it's your legs doing a lot of work, but I'd like your torso to remain upright. So you're just gonna really just lightly tap the floor with your knee, bring that up, step forward, lightly tap, bring it back up. So 90 degrees in each leg. I want nice, a nice corner in each leg and stepping up. <clears throat> so how'd you go? Think about your balance. Where I see a lot of people start to fail early on in their journey is the balance on a lunge. And sometimes we'll go through on the next round. I'll show you a quick trick to help with your balance with that one. All right, bird dog. This is where we're gonna grab the, the mat again. And with a bird dog, we're going to all fours, knees and hands. Now this is the, uh, the beginner level of the bird dog. Right hand out, left leg out straight and hold. Bring it back down. Left hand out, right leg out straight, hold it for a second. Good. So where are you gonna feel the activation with this one now? Little bit of core activation to hold yourself in balance. But what I'd like you to think about is the glute. So that one butt cheek that's holding the straight leg out. And then the shoulder muscles, the back shoulder muscles on the straight arm. So the anterior or the posterior delts. Um, also a little bit of, a little bit of deltoid, um, oh sorry, rhomboid. And a little bit of traps just to hold that that up straight. So shoulder mobility is pretty important. 
And where you're gonna find shoulder mobility failing is when you've got a straight arm up above your head. So try and keep that straight. Try and keep it, try and keep the form pretty nice here. Okay, elbows to knees. We're standing for this one. Um, what we're gonna do with this is focus a little bit on balance and focus a bit more on core control as well. Fingertips to the temples. You're gonna bring one elbow down, one knee up. Try and touch it. So this is, we're not gonna go too fast to begin with. You're gonna focus on balancing on one foot. Try and get that knee up as high as you can and try and keep your torso upright. Try not to bring your neck down. I'd like your neck to stay upright. You know, bring that elbow forward and touch the knee to your elbow. Good, good. So that one might be a little bit of a mobility challenge for some people. You might find that you can't get your elbow to your knee. Don't stress, don't worry about it. Try and, and see how high you can get your knee up towards that elbow and see if you can balance without, without falling over on one leg as well. Okay. Grab the mat again, because we're gonna lay down. Side leg raises with our left side. So, left hand side means I'm gonna face you. I'm gonna have my left elbow on the floor, resting my head on my left hand. Right hand goes out in front for balance. Push your hips forward, straight line in the body. Raise that right leg, and down. Doesn't matter if you started on the, the right hand side and you're raising your left leg. It's fine, we're gonna balance it out on the next set. And what I'd love you to do is hold it for a second and then lower down. Nice and easy. Like I said, don't worry about how many reps right now today. Today isn't about reps. Today isn't about going fast. Today is about activation and form. I'd love for you to, to spend a bit of time making sure that everything you're doing right now, it looks good, it feels good. Um, also use it as a time to identify where you may have some, some either areas of opportunity or maybe some injury points. Um, because I know <clears throat> if you've not really squat before, and sometimes if you're doing a lunge or a squat, you might feel something in your knees, you might feel something in your hips. Um, could be a few things. So left hand side now, I'm laying on my right. So left hand leg or the left leg goes up into the air, up and down. Keep both legs nice and straight. Whether you point your toe or not is up to you. I tend to keep mine at that, that 90 degree, just a natural, a natural hold in the toe. Because what I'm focusing on is not the calf, it's this medial glute, it's the hips. Down and good. So now we got squat thrusts. So like I was saying before about the, uh, the identification of, of potentially, potentially injury points or mobility issues, just have a listen to your body. Um, try and determine if there's a difference between the pain that you might feel, whether it's an injury or whether it's just fatigue. Um, sometimes sometimes you're, you're gonna say, oh, it hurts, it hurts, I don't wanna do anymore. And it's just you because you're, you're getting tired, you're getting fatigued there. Sometimes it's a sharper pain and it's an injury. Okay, squat thrusts. We're gonna start off nice and easy with these. Squatting down, hands on the floor, thrust one leg out at a time, thrust them back in, stand up, squeeze the butt. So we're doing a squat. We're now adding in a little bit of leg work so we can really, really open up the hips. And when I say open up the hips, two, two meanings of that. Down here, you see how my knees are going out so that I can open up the, the groin area, but then opening up the hips as we go into that straight line. The hip flexors on the front here. When you, when you squat it down like this, they're shortened. When you're standing up and your, your hips are extended, you're actually lengthening your hip flexors. So I'd like us to, to think about that, both opening up vertic vertically and horizontally in that hip thrust. Cool, 60 second rest. So that was round one. So now that you've seen what, we, what we've done, what we're going to do, I'd like you to think more about now your own form. So I'll repeat the cues as we go through, but I'd like you to start now adding a few more reps in. Try and, try and build a flow. So go from one movement into the next movement. Um, if you do need to stop and regain your balance, again, don't stress, do what you need to do. But what I'd like you to think about is maybe adding these in together so you can, you can for a full 30 seconds, get some movements in, get a bit of a flow, build that central nervous system. Okay, squats. Now, remember, heels down flat, pushing the butt back. Watch me from the side this time. I'll do these from, from a different angle each time. Now you may hear people and you may see things on social media, especially with squats. 
Sometimes people say things like ass to grass or, you know what, go deep or go home. Now that, you know what, if, if, if you've trained to a certain level and you have the strength to do it, and I know with my clients, if I know they're strong enough to do it, then yes, I'll encourage them to push their limits. But when you're beginning, don't worry about what other people say. Um, use yourself as your own guideline. If you can take a, a video of yourself, how deep you go, um, you'll wanna make sure that your form is right before you do anything silly like going too deep or too low. Because again, it's a bit like going too fast. If your form's off, you're gonna teach yourself some bad habits. So go to the point where you feel comfortable and then build it up as you, as you, as you know your form is good and it's gonna hold you. Plank. Bring that mat over. Forearms on the floor. Kick one leg back at a time, pushing the heels back. And remember the first two cues I say, squeeze your butt, squeeze your quads. That helps to straighten the hips out. And then from there, think about having straight legs, pushing those heels back, stacking your shoulders over the elbows, and breathing into your belly. Now, if you can only hold a plank for 10 seconds, then please do. Hold it for 10 seconds. Drop back down to your knees, take a breath, and then push it up. Because I'd much rather you hold it for as long as it takes for your trans abs to collapse. Drop down, take a breath, and then re-engage those trans abs, please. This being a pretty one-sided workout, it is easy for me to, to sit back and just, hey, hold a 30-second plank. But being realistic about it, when I started, I think it was about seven seconds. Seven seconds was my best plank. Um, but you build it up as time goes on, and that's the, that's the fun bit with these things. Okay, lunges. I'm gonna step directly towards you because what I'd like you to, to think about is see how my feet are about shoulder width? They're about the width of when I'm doing a squat. When I step forward with my lunge, they're gonna remain this width apart, okay? So don't, don't step in one in front of the other. This is a big, don't do this. You can if you'd like, if you've got the balance to, but you're gonna find if you can maintain the width, between your feet for each of these lunges, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to balance on the way up and down. So notice how I'm also moving my arms like this. Again, beginner's cue, because you wanna counterbalance which, which limb is moving. Um, but as you get further and further into it, you, can, you find that, you know what, you can start to do lunges with your arms here, lunges with your arms above your head. Um, and if you've got something on your back, you may even have your arms here while you're holding a sandbag or a barbell. A um, little bit more advanced, but things to look forward to as you get better and better at lunges. Bird dogs, grab the mat again, rolling that out into the middle. <coughs> so, not much more to add to this one. Hands and knees, contralateral, hold it for a second, and down. Try and pretend there's a, there's a tray on your back, a tray of drinks or a bucket of water, and I'd like you to not let that bucket roll off, okay? so. Maintaining the flat back, the flat shoulders, the flat hips. Squeezing one butt cheek, squeezing the shoulders on the other side. Good. Nice. <clears throat> awesome. So, catching yourself, regaining your, your balance and composure here. Bringing yourself onto your feet for these elbows to knees. So this movement, the elbows to knees, is a precursor to, to, I know Mikey likes this one, the Toy Soldiers. Toy Soldiers is a great balance and strength and coordination movement, but before we go there, we're gonna bring our fingertips to our temples. We're gonna kick one knee up, touch, down, touch, down. So these are kind of like standing crunches, cross body crunches. So you see, if I stand side onto the camera here, I'm trying to keep my head, chest, back all upright and I'm using a lot of power in my hip flexors to bring my knee to my elbow. I'm gonna bring that knee up as high as I can. Now again, physically speaking, if you are beginning a fitness journey, which you may see, you may have seen this before, um, I've been there, I've been there. Physically, I wasn't able to lift my legs up past, past my gut, and that's a thing, that, that happens. Don't ever feel shameful about that, don't ever feel like it's something to, uh, to hold you back from what you want to get to. Because over time, if you can look after your nutrition, that gut will take care of itself. Get good workouts in, get good nutrition into you, that gut will slowly disappear and you'll find yourself progressing. Um, and that is a really, really, really good motivator, I find, or I found, is that when you've got a, a good metric, such as body fat or waist size, 
and you start seeing improvements in those due to the, the things that you're doing in your life, like the workouts and like the nutrition, it actually really does, does push you on to, to continue and to be better. Good. So with these side raises, again, the most important portion of the side raise isn't the raise itself. I should, I should rename them. I should call them controlled leg descents. Probably wouldn't fit very well in the, in the timer there, would it? But the important part isn't the raise. The important part is how controlled your leg is as it comes down. Because we're not gonna let gravity do its thing. We're, not, we're, we're gonna fight against gravity and we're gonna have a nice stable descent. You're like landing a, landing a helicopter. That's what I want you to think about. So if your helicopter's up nice and high, you don't wanna slam back into the ground. Your, your passengers won't pay for that kind of service. You want it to just touch down nice and softly. So it's that helicopter just, just, just touching down on the, on the landing pad. There we go. I know Mikey's looking forward to us having a helipad one day. And this is how we'd land, just nice and soft. Yeah, good touchdown. Boop, there you go. <laughs> it's a running joke, by the way. There's no way that I'd have a helipad. I couldn't afford it with the three Lamborghinis I already have, unfortunately. What, what, what can you do? What can you do? <laughs> All right, squat thrusts. Now that we're on the squat thrusts and you know what you're doing, I'd like you to speed them up. So this is the second round. We're gonna push through with a, with a little bit more pace now. So hands flat on the floor, leg, leg, up, up. So down, leg, 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 up. Down, leg, 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 up. Try and make your feet nimble. Try and make your upper body solid. So hands down, keep it nice and solid. Push them out into a plank, bring them up into the bottom of the squat and push your butt forward as you do this. So straight plank, standing up, down, straight plank, full hip extension, thrust forward. Good, awesome. So hopefully that movement brings your heart rate up a little bit. So if you're watching your heart rate, take note of what kind of movements bring the heart rate up. And this is where people start to say things like, you know, the difference between lifting and cardio, where these days, I, to be honest, as a trainer, I try not to, to build a, a wall between strength and cardio. I tend to, to look a little bit more, I suppose, what's gonna build you towards your goals. And obviously people that are doing like triathlons, marathons, learning to run a 5K, they're focusing a lot on, on cardio because the cardio is gonna keep you going for the length of time that you want, but there's still a very, very important strength component. There's still lifting, there's still, there's still isometric holds, there's still core stability in, involved with all those things. Um, and same with lifting. You, you can hardly learn to lift heavier weights if you don't have that cardio capability to get your breath back in between reps. So it's a bit of everything there. Now squats, here we go. I'd like you to, now, third round, team. One more round left in this workout. Add a few more movements, okay? Add a few more reps. Count them in as long as you feel like you're going really, really well in terms of form. Make sure your butt isn't dipping. So don't do that. If, you're, if your back curves at the bottom of a squat, I'd like you to, to stop a little bit higher, okay? I'd like you to not go down to parallel or below parallel. And we can talk a little bit later, if you're still in stream, and um, we can talk a little bit later about what you can do to improve your core strength and your form to stop your butt from winking under. So that's, that's the thing. If you're going super deep in your squat and your butt, your, your sacrum dips, I'd prefer you to not go as deep and work on that sacrum dip and the core strength before you add more reps in. That's pretty important to me as a trainer. Plank, let's go. I'd like you to fight for this now. Last round, so if you, on the last two rounds, were not able to hold for a full 30 seconds, I'd like you to really, really push. And one good way of thinking about this is if you're breathing, 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 just talk through the cues in your head again one more time. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the quads, push the heels back, shoulders over the elbows. Breathe. If you feel like breaking down, just go through the cues in your head again one more time. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your quads, heels back, shoulders over the elbows, and guess what? You'll be able to get a few more seconds out, and that's, that might be all it takes. It literally might be all it takes, it's just to get a couple more seconds in, take a deep breath, 
re-go through the cues and you'll find that you, you'll get yourself through an extra PB. Another PB, another few seconds. We had a big weekend actually. One of my clients, Snips, came in. We busted her squat PB in the rack there. Um, she added another 2.5 kilos to her squat. Fantastic, we love it. Okay, lunges, let's go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna train myself to have my arms up here in front of my chin. Now the reason for that, once I start getting better with lunges, one way that you can, you can increase the, uh, the complexity and the intensity of a squat is to actually add some more weight. How you going? Welcome in. Thanks for following the channel here. Now you may, you may see this workout in future on YouTube, but right now, being live, it's good to meet you, new friend. Okay, we've got bird dogs now. So grab your mat, bring that back into the center. If you're like me and you're not, you're not working for a camera, you have the luxury of just having your mat somewhere, wherever you need it. So you just walk over to your mat, keep it where it needs to be. Um, and we're gonna get ready for bird dogs now. So bird dogs, very, very good core control movement. This is a precursor to a couple of uh, very cool yoga holds as well. So we're gonna keep our knees on the floor. Again, we're working beginner level with this one. So just focus on keeping the hips flat, keeping those shoulders flat. Hold it for a second, bring it down. Hold it for a second, bring it down. So we're alternating sides with this one. The leg goes out nice and straight towards the back wall, engaging that one butt cheek. And then the shoulders, hopefully your ear is touching your shoulder or your bicep, depending on your, your mobility there. Shoulder or bicep, and bring that back down, good. How's everyone feeling? Four minutes left, team. Four minutes. We've got the elbows to knees. Now this one is the, if you've, if you've seen some of my workouts in the past, we've got a movement called a steam engine. Um, I've stolen the name. That came from a, from a guy I used to work out with on DVD. What's a DVD? I don't know. It's old tech. So we're gonna, we're gonna train ourselves to bring that knee up, touch the knee, or the elbow. Knees to elbow. Knees to elbow. See, my head and my chest and my stomach, they're all upright. What we're working is the hip flexor and this oblique abdominals to bring the, the knee across the body up towards the contralateral elbow. Contralateral just means the difference between left and right. So if we're talking left knee, right elbow. Right knee, left elbow. Awesome, good, 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 good. Now we're not bouncing through that one. We're not, we're not trying to jump around like a, like a crossfitter. With that one, we're focusing on form. I'd love you to balance. I'd love you to take, you know, five seconds to get that knee up to the elbow. Touch, whoop, and then down. You see how that's sometimes a little bit more difficult? Slowing it down can be more difficult than adding more reps sometimes. Bring that mat back out, or just walk over to your mat, laying down on the left-hand side, over here. We're gonna raise the leg up, Hold it for three, two, one. Oh, there's some spice. There you go. So for us beginners, three, two, one. Nice. We're learning now. We're learning to activate the muscles and hold them in an isometric, under an isometric tension. So here we go. Hold, three, two, one. Bring that down. And one more, up. And when you hear the beep, bring it down. Nice, nice. So if this is your first workout with me, welcome in. Um, and I'm sorry, not sorry, about some of the, about some of the, the sore muscles you're gonna get in your hips. Um, the, the, the medial glutes are very, very important for everyday life. And they're one of the muscles that just gets really, really underutilized. Um, when people start going to the gym, if, if, if people start off a fitness journey, um, an, un, an untrained fitness journey, where there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're gonna get the right advice, um, they'll often do movements like you know, bench press, squats, lunges, etc. Um, and then when they go for a run, especially if you go trail running, they get home and they realize how sore their hips are. And one of the reasons for that is that the, the medial glutes, these muscles here that we're working to hold our leg up in the air, they're really important to stabilize your, your motion. If you're, if you're running in a straight line and you step on something that tends to push you the other way, like when you're on a trail, your hips help to stabilize your knees. 
So you'll find that the, these muscles here that we just worked, super important for uh, long-term fatiguing under trail running conditions. Um, and if you are the type of person that does squats and finds that sometimes your knees buckle like this, these are the muscles that help to keep your knees in line when you're squatting. So it's pretty important that we learn to activate them. We learn what they feel like right now, early on in the game. Okay, let's get these squat thrusts in. But what I'd like you to do, hands down, both legs, both legs. There we go, we're stepping it up a pace, or a notch, sorry. So, arms, both legs, both legs up. Good, give me a couple of these. Let's finish it off, team. 10 more seconds. Straight legs, up. Both legs at a time, up. Both legs, up. And I've pulled a sneaky on you. I'm teaching you how to do burpees, okay? So you can see that this motion here, both legs out, is the, is the precursor to a burpee. These ones here are the precursor to steam engines. And all the other movements there, precursors to bigger, greater things in life. So, well done. Thank you so much for joining me on that beginner workout. Look for the green. If you'd like another beginner workout, the green ones are the way to go. If you found that simple, if you found like you, you want a bit more of a challenge, step it up to the blues and then the purple workouts, they're the advanced ones. They're the fun ones where you can really, really, really test yourself. Dip your toe in the water if you want. Find a purple one, have a go. All right, team, thank you so much. And we'll catch you online next time or live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash fit for purpose.